Uh, welcome to the podcast, everybody. My name is Chris Flippin. Um, we're going to go around here and we're gonna, everyone's going to introduce themselves. Um, so the name of the title of our podcast is going to be Love is Love, Real Perspectives, where we're going to give you perspectives on life, love, and everything else from uh, four different perspectives, right? So um, go ahead. And, uh, so um, ladies first, I guess we should have done that first. So Liz, go ahead. <laughs> Hello, everyone, everyone. My name is Liz, lovely lady Liz. And um, what you want me to start talking about my perspective now, or you just want me to introduce myself? <laughs> I guess it's just an introduction. So, Greg, go for it. Introduce yourself, man. Hey, everybody. I am Greg Goble, and I am a gay life coach living in Colorado Springs. And I'm here to talk about love. We've got to talk about love from all perspectives. And so, this is a great podcast, and we're just so grateful that you were here today to uh, listen to all our different ideas. Amazing. That we are. That we are. So, Greg, um, why don't you go ahead and start off, you know, since, uh, you know, you're, tell us a little bit about, you know, how you, like, you're, you know, you said you're a life coach, right? So, tell yeah. us a little bit about how you've noticed that, um, like, what are you seeing, like, in, in relationships today from your, from your angle? Like, how do you, you know what I'm saying? Does that make sense, what I'm asking? Yeah, you know, things have really changed a lot um, in the past 10 years in particular because, you know, for gay people, they use this app called Grindr, uh, just like for straight people, they use Tinder. And so they get on there and they're looking for love in all the wrong places, basically, because they go in there and they're looking for someone for a one night stand and then they end up ghosting people. They end up causing all sorts of havoc and drama. And it's probably the same in the straight world, I'm sure. Um, but it, it's just like it's not conducive to, you know, growing yourself because everyone's just constantly looking to get laid, you know? That's true. That's yeah. so true. So, yeah. so this, so, um, you know, if we could just kind of expand on that a little bit, you know, because like, that's, um, I really think, like, I don't know if you've ever been ghosted. I have. And it's like yeah. the shittiest thing in the fucking world. You know what I'm oh, saying? Yeah. It's crazy. Like, there's no closure there. There's just like, it just leaves you wondering like, what the fuck, right? So Liz, if you don't mind, if you could like kind of give your perspective on like what he was talking about, like with relationships and how they have changed in like the last 10 years with that, with the, all the social See, media. I will give you the, I'm going to have to give you like my perspective as to what I've been around. And I will be honest with you when it comes to those, you know, like those, um, I don't know if you call those like social media kind of platforms, of interacting with, you know, single and mixing around and trying to find a relationship, I have no idea. Because I have been in a long-term relationship. The one I'm in right now has been three years, and the one before that has been 10 years. So to me, when it comes to the dating life and what's new and how are um, a lot of these um, younger people, even middle-aged and even older people, you know, going out and communicating and dating is, I'm not firsthand experience but I can tell you from the experience of everyone that you know I mentor um, all around our area it's all done on through digital platforms everything nowadays it's even barely rare to actually even meet someone face to face unless you're gonna like hook up like that right. shit did not exist <laughs> I was dating you know what I'm saying when I was dating you actually have to go to a place and socially talk to someone and if you make a connection then you go on multiple dates and then from there you take things differently now yep. it's a whole new lifestyle it's really truly on hooking up type thing first and then let's see if we can build a relationship after which right blows my mind like how do you make a connection with somebody if you're just like straight going for like hooking up i mean i don't know call mm -hmm. me old-fashioned but I need to know you before I lay in bed with you. <laughs> I yeah. love it. Yeah, and, and you know what? I, I definitely, you know, that's one of the things that, you know, for me um, in the past, you know, I, I was actually just talking to one of my clients today and, and telling, you know, he was asking me, he was like, well, hey, look, you know, I've been with my lady for two years already and, and I'm not sure that I really love her, you know? And so um, it made me think of uh, somebody who I had recently met, um, Actually, you 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 know her, uh, Liz, uh, from the event, right? Oh yes, yes. And so so we got we clicked, we got along really well, and so now she's back over and she's like that's where her family lives, and she's to live um, to work, right? And so what's amazing with that is like you know I dated someone who had narcissistic personality disorder, so that really effed me up really bad, right? 
And so she also dated somebody who had a, a person of borderline personality disorder. So it was, it's kind of weird. Cause like, we're, like I, I, instead of being like frustrated that there's distance between somebody who I click with so well, I was actually like, you know, do this is a blessing for both of us. Right. Because, mm-hmm. you know, rather than like what you're talking about earlier, Greg is like jumping into a relationship just to fuck, right. You know, or just to have sex, excuse my language, but kids are listening. Right. But it's right. like, that's what happens. Right. It's like, you know, even with my ex-wife, I mean, like, dude, we moved in, like, after four months, right? I mean, we were together for 13 years, but it's, like, even then, we drifted apart because after, like, the honeymoon phase, and, you know, that lasted for a long time, but then we didn't really know each other afterwards. Yeah. And so, you know, with with, um, with with Irina, it's, like, I'm taking the time, and, you know, wherever it leads with us, whether it does or not, you know, at least what I'm doing is, like, every day I send her one question, but it's not, like, what's your favorite color? What's your number? Like, you know, like what's one thing that like when you were growing up, what did you want to be and why? Right. And like another question that I asked her was like, the last one I asked was like, what's one, what was the last thing that embarrassed you the most? Right. And then it's like deeper level questions. And so when I was talking to my friend, I was telling him like, you're ready to break up with a girl that you don't even know. (laughs) Right. It's like, how can you say And so, so yeah, so I mean, it's like I really agree with what you're saying, Liz. You know, I, 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 you know, I was together with my ex-wife for 13 years, and then I was in another, you know, long-term relationship for like a year, and then another one for like a year. So it's like the whole dating scene for me is still kind of like, you know, all brand new. But even then, I still see like everyone else out there. Like that's what you're saying, Greg. Like that's what, like everyone's out just for like the seems like the instant gratification, right? Yeah, because you know what, there, there's not a lot of intimacy left in our world today. And you know, a lot of people kind of confuse sex and intimacy. They think they're the same thing, but I have to tell you they're not. Sex is a great thing. It feels good, but it's you know, wonderful. However, intimacy, there's something to be said for that because there's this connection that you have. And you know, in my from my perspective, God is not some anthropo let me say it again. God is not some anthropomorphic being up in the sky. So where do you meet God? Well, we're all God in action, basically. We all have the spirit of God within us. And when we have sex with someone, when we make love to someone, we're basically connecting our energy to their energy. And therein is where God resides. And so when Mm -hmm. we connect that energy, all kinds of wonderful things can take place. But it gets deeper when we're into the intimacy. And what you said earlier is so prevalent because you're asking questions. You're getting to know the person. And that right there makes all the difference in the world if you're going to have a fulfilling and loving relationship with someone because you know the ins and the outs of who they are as a person. Right. Well, let, let's, just, let's just say this, right? I'm going to do my twofold double-edged sword. One, I agree with you. When you're making love with somebody, absolutely. It is a spiritual connection with your being and their being. Your right. energy levels are one. So it's a, coll- a connection level on a whole new different perspective. Fucking is fucking. Fucking is straight. I'm done. There's no <laughs> connection. It's instant gratification. Bye bye. See you later. If you were good, man, I'll pull you back. If you weren't, next. That's how it is. <laughs> In this generation, that's what we're getting because you want to know why? My belief is because people don't know how to communicate anymore. Everyone is on their phones, whether it's Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook. All these different social media, swipe, oh, I like you, swipe, mm, I don't know about you, swipe, mm, you can put a dick down. Like, what the hell is that? And this is how these generations are learning now how to communicate. So to them, they go out, they hook up, because that's what they're being told, and that's what they're being taught. That's how they're being molded into this society now. It has nothing to do with taking somebody out on a dinner, one-on-one talking to them, getting to know them on an interpersonal level, getting onto that spiritual connection. They don't have that anymore. To them, it's boring or it's just a mundane way of dating. So now you're right. Everybody's just straight fucking. So that spiritual connection, that's something that is lost. That's something that so many people have yet to even experience. Me, I can't do that. I have to have an actual connection with the individual before I can lay in my bed with you. You're not coming into my bed unless you enter my heart and my kingdom. Until then, you're not going in there. Ooh, I love that. Until you come into my heart. I love that. But you know what you said is so prevalent because communication is the intimacy that I'm talking about. 
That's yes. what I mean. You're, you, he was asking question, uh, questions a minute ago to the girl that he's dating. He was talking about it just a second ago. And you know, asking those questions, it's imperative. We want to know who the person is before we jump into a relationship. And then we only get to know them for a month or two. And then we're going to have to move out because we didn't know anything about them. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, that doesn't work. No, and, and just to clarify, I'm not dating her yet. <laughs> yet. Okay. Oh, no, you're, you're getting the yet in there, though. You know, you're, you're and, doing and, the preliminary interviews. Well, right. yeah, well, here's the thing. You know, what I'm saying, and, and and you know, obviously, there's there there was a connection with her and I when we met, right? And and the way we the way that it happened was was like amazing, right? Because so we were sitting there talking. And she was sharing her food with me, right? Because she had some veggies, right? She had some cherry tomatoes and some zucchini. So, because she's she's a vegetarian, right? Um, or I think oh. maybe vegan. I'm not sure, but but so she went to eat a cherry tomato, and when she went to bite down on it, it uh, some of the juice squirted out onto my shirt. <laughs> and, 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 and in that moment, in that very moment, when that happened, no one else was looking at us. So all of a sudden, her and I, her, our eyes met, and the look on my face must have been as priceless as hers because we both just burst it out in a laughter, right? <laughs> and that very moment, like of that sharing that laughter together, I mean, it was like awesome, yeah. you know. And so even though like the rest of the event, I didn't really get a chance to talk to her, and and now she's you know six thousand miles away. What an opportunity to take advantage of this time, you know? And like you're saying, Liz, right? It's like and, and even with you, Greg, but we're sitting here talking about that. Instead of looking at, because one of my friends is like, oh, dude, like, what a bummer, you know, that she's so far away. And I'm like, dude, no, it's not. Like, what a blessing, you know, that I actually, that rather than doing what I normally have done in the past, which obviously hasn't gotten me anywhere, even with my ex-wife, you know, it wasn't, you know, sure, you know, because of the connection I had with my ex-wife, that you know, lasted longer, right? Those feelings were, you know, but eventually – right yeah exactly so so greg i got a question for you so here we are in a society today you know and, and liz I was, I was messaging <laughs> i love it <laughs> you know that so how do we start how do we start to to get people to realize that that that's what's happening i mean is it i mean do we have to wait for them to realize it or can we as individuals you know how do how do you like what, what's your thought on that well, you, you know, it's for me personally, I think it's an individual thing, but as I also think it's a collective thing. So where does it start? It starts at home. So in order for us to make any changes in our life, we know that we've got to do the ultimate work. Then. So that means we got to be the example for other people, but we don't live our life to be that example. We just are that example because that's who we are. And right. then, then we need to have formats like this where we can talk about it where other people can understand that you know in order to have that connection that you're so desperately wanting we you need to make some changes in your life you need to change your paradigms you need to change your actions and what you're right. doing so that you can create the world that you want so that you can be more happier so that you can have more love so that mm -hmm. you can experience that intimacy that we were talking about a minute ago right. amen yeah, you know, and one of the things that I've been noticing a lot too, and Liz, you you know, let me know if you see this a lot with, with people that you're mentoring and, and Greg is likewise, you know, you, you start seeing a lot of people talking about soulmates and twin flames and, and all of this thing, right? And and yet, you know, and, and all of us have a masculine and a feminine energy, you know what I'm saying? So for me, you know, once I, I, I you know, uh, Anthony Robbins has this test online where you can go and see what you, what type of energy you are. And so I did that. And once I figured out that I was more of that my, my predominant energy is feminine, right? I was able to focus. Okay. So now I know where I'm lacking, right? So, because, you know, I didn't know to focus on the, the masculine energy. So here I am trying to be like, you know, more emotional. I'm already emotional. It's like, <laughs> right? it's just like what I, do? So I was like, I couldn't figure. So, but once I realized, like you were saying earlier, right? Like we're all energy, right? And when we connect as an energy on an energetic level, it's so much better because now you really truly can connect in, in the right way. Like same with you, Liz, you're saying that, you know, it's like you're not coming into my room until you feel that energy is there. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so do you, do you know, this is a question for both of you guys. Do you guys think that maybe, you know, like for me, I had this epiphany where I had to come into union with myself first, my masculine and feminine energies within me first before I can even expect to be able to, 
you know, expand that outwards, right? I mean, how do you guys feel about that? I think I'm going to go off real quick and jump on what Greg was saying of how do we change or how do we start um, helping the youth in general and everyone else thereafter help start changing their mindset. And Greg ding dinged on something hard from the home. One of the biggest things that changed in our generation, meaning all of us growing up mm -hmm. and probably even the generation before us is like the divorce rates now mm -hmm. in the past, like I would say 10, probably 15 years is astronomically disgusting. Right. And coming from broken homes, single parent homes, in homes where you've seen your parents loving one another and all of a sudden hating one another and divorcing or raised up by a single mother where your father was never around or vice versa. A lot of it does stem from the home and these children are being, are being raised with single parents. So a lot of the times, a lot of these a lot of these people in general, they're in fear of commitment. They're in fear of building a relationship with someone because they don't want to go through what they've seen their parents go through. They don't want to experience the hurt that they've seen their mom or dad have. So a lot of them tend to put up a fence already and they're already in the defense mode because they don't want to fall into the trap of getting married and getting divorced or having their heart broken. So what do they do? They already have a mindset of like, they don't want to find that soulmate or they don't want to go through that and they keep it to a bare minimum level of communication with somebody else mm -hmm. or they were raised in a home where there was no communication between the parent and the child so they don't they themselves don't even know how to communicate with other individuals a lot of these kids that i even have that work with me my co-workers these are like 19 20 30 year old kids that can't eat they don't even know how to have a sentence with you like they can't even have a conversation with you. They look down on the floor. They're not looking at my eyes. And it's just like, how do you not, a basic conversation, how can't you give me that? Like, what happened? You know, they're in fear of opening up or they're in fear of human interaction because guess what? It's been like weeded out. Like I said, technology is an amazing thing. It's absolutely, look where we are. I'm in Connecticut. Chris, where are you at right now? San Francisco. Greg, where are you at right now? I'm in Colorado. Amazing that we are completely in three different areas and we can actually right now vibe and have an have a, you know interaction with one another. Right. But yet at the same time, many people take advantage of that in another sense to where they have this wall, this you know, like this film that they put over that they can hide themselves and now they can be a different person who they want to be by social interaction through social media and not have that one-on-one -on -one personal connection with the human being yeah yeah to, to me it's a, to me it's a uh, it's a consciousness thing you know that we live in a world where people don't respect each other anymore we live in a world where people can just say anything that they want on social media and then disappear and they don't even know who it was. You know, we live in a world where you get scammed all the time. And so technology is great on one hand, and there's so many advances that we've made. And we need to continue going down that direction. But we also need to define how we're going to live our life with technology. And I think we've just been floundering with it for so long. Now we have, need to have some clarity about how we're going to show up in today's age. It's the 21st century, and we're moving into the age of Aquarius. Aquarius is all about change. It's all about new beginnings. It's all about wonderful things that are about to take place. But what's happening is we're not redefining who we are. I mean, look at our president of the United States. Did you ever think that we would have a man who he like he is in in the press regardless what your political affiliation is the right. point is he's different from the rest of the type of people that we've had and we're going through major changes and we need to examine those changes yeah okay. nice guy so so greg so let me ask you like for for our viewers that there are listeners that would be listening to this right now you know, because because I know like for myself, there there was a point where I was thinking to myself like, where do I start? You know, because like for me, like that was I think that was like the hardest point. You know, when I was at my lowest point, um, was trying to figure out like because I knew like within me that I wanted something to change, right? With the way that I interacted with people, yeah, right. 
but that took me a long because I didn't have anybody to talk to or didn't know where to you know anybody have like somewhere like a show like this that that actually had the perspectives from the women's side, from the gay man's side, from the straight man's, from the, you know, and then once we have, you know, when we get there, another person in here, you know, from that side as well, where, you know, and I think you are, would be, you know, both of us, you, same with you, Liz, I want to hear your side of this too. Where does someone start? You know, like if, if, if someone, you know, a younger gay male is sitting here wondering, like, where do I start? Like, what, give them, give them some, some, some tips here. Well, I mean, think about this. If you're a millennial and you grew up in today's society, all you know is going on a app in order to find connection with someone. Think about that for a second. I mean, it's so different from the world that we lived in, you know, when we were growing up. All, they, they, they grew up with computers in the school system. That's all they know is computers and putting their head into something, and they don't really know. It, it's become um, intangible. Right. Yeah. You know, it's become intangible, and they think that's real. And it is on a certain level from the standpoint, yeah, we have that great connection as far as being able to talk to each other through technology. But when it comes to a heartfelt connection with someone who's right there in front of you, that takes a lot of energy behind what they have to do in order to move them from point A to point B to get them to know someone because they're not used to that. Does that make sense? Yeah, so, absolutely. And since yeah, they, no, since they, absolutely great, absolutely. Since they don't know how to do that, then they have to be taught. And if we use the good side of technology versus the bad side, then what we can do is we can elevate ourselves to a new level. We need to change our paradigms. We need to change our thinking about it. And we, you know, I love what she said a minute ago, communication. We need to communicate with each other. That is so key because no one's going to know, and we need to do it through media. We need to do it through the television. We need to stop accepting things that are uh, insignificant, things that have no value. What do we value today, and how can we get other people to value relationships? How can we get people to value love? How can we get people to value being in real time versus just constantly, you know, putting their head in the computer and looking right. down at a screen. So if you had to give one of our listeners like one tip on how to start that process, what would you say that would be? Okay, you talking to me or her? You. One, one. Um, like how, first of all, we're all coaches, right? So getting a coach I think everybody should have a coach, even coaches, right? Hey, yeah, you know why? <laughs> Look at her doing the little happy dance. I love it. Because a coach can help you transform your life. I, I refer to myself as a spiritual electrician. I get in there and I rewire the brain. Nice. I, love I like it. that. I get in there and I rewire the, ba- the brain. We, we talk about stuff that needs to be discussed. And we also want to go in there and remember that as a child, you are wired a certain way. You're wired because the, the conditioning that has taken place from your parents, from mm-hmm. your teachers, from your grandparents, from everybody that you're around, and people will believe anything, so they just believe those thoughts about they're not good enough, they're not worthy enough. They take those, they put it in their consciousness, and they are rewired, I mean, I'm sorry, they're wired a certain way. So we have to get in there and change their circuit board. Right. Okay. So Liz, what should I see you biting at the top of the bit up there? Go for it. So, I'm so, ready. So, so, all right. Go for it. Go. All right, first off, let me just say everybody, I'm eating chips because um I've been working hard all day and I haven't been able to eat. So tell people what so you that's do. That's why you see me munching. Tell people what you do. I am an EMT, so I work on the ambulance. For us, it is not easy to just be like, oh, I'm gonna plan my lunch break because I don't get a lunch break. If right. I have nine one ones all day. I'm doing 911s all day to the moment I punch out. And unfortunately today, that was that kind of day where it was very aggressive, heavy on um, 911s. So yeah, I'm a little hungry, but at the same time, I still want to give you guys all my input. So here it goes. If I were to give an advice to all my beautiful young men, it definitely starts with self-love. I mentor so many students and so many co-workers and so many people 
on loving yourself. This generation now doesn't have that. They're on like this, I don't understand it, on this like wavelength of where they have to look a certain way, they have to talk a certain way, they have to do everything that's molded upon what society thinks is good looking or um, what's in or what's hot. And these people just don't love themselves. And that is key, is key. You have to love yourself. If you do not love yourself, you cannot physically, emotionally, and spiritually love anyone else. That's first and foremost. That's my take. And then as I was saying, yes, being a mentor and being able to, um, being able to teach people, inspire people, motivate people, and help people on showing them the way, on having this as a, as a network, as an avenue to be like, listen, listen up. I'm here to help you. Let me help you get to where you need to be. Mm -hmm. You want to find your soulmate? You want to find your twin flame? You want to find anyone? Let me help you and guide you to where it is that you want to be. But first and foremost, let me show you how to love yourself because you have to love yourself. Like me, I fucking love myself. I love myself. <laughs> I love myself. I love it took a long time before I was able to love myself. And the moment that I started loving myself, everything in my life has been working in my favor. That is what I try first and foremost every single day that I see these young ones. That's what I try to instill. I think that's something so freaking key. Now I leave the floor to you. Yeah, Chris. <laughs> hey, Chris, if you don't mind, I want to say something on the Please, please do. Please do that. Okay, so here's the deal. I have a group online. It's about a thousand men in there. I've got a couple of women in there as well. But the name of my group is the Gay Man's Guide to Healthy Relationships, starting with you. Beautiful. Now, gay life coach, what I've done is I've gone in there a lot and looked around at the competition. And what I've seen is that, you know, there are gay coaches that want to help you uh, find a relationship. Well, I didn't want to go in from that perspective because if you're not healthy first, then you cannot have a healthy relationship, just like she was talking ding, about. Ding, ding, ding. Right. Mm -hmm. And so what I what I help people with is to teach them that they have self worth, that they have their, they can raise their self esteem, and that they can create this incredible relationship with themselves. And that way, they'll be able to look for the red flags that come along, and they'll be able to make better choices. Which you know, the choices are superpower. That's how we navigate ourselves through life. Free will. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I was saying. And I love my group because they they're so. Uh, active in the group talking about you know different perspectives and that's one way that we can change our world is by changing our thought processes by by, you know, by communicating with folks yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, you know I, I couldn't agree with you more on that and in, in, in both of you guys with that you know I think one of the biggest epiphanies for me in in starting that self-love process was Bless you. how in the freaking world can I ever expect someone to love me unconditionally if I don't love myself unconditionally? How in the world can I expect somebody to respect me if I don't respect myself? Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. And, and so, so one of the things with one of my clients I was telling him the other day, he's like, Oh my gosh, my girlfriend keeps shitting on me and this and that. I'm like, yeah, you, you gave her permission to. And he's, you know, he, I can, I can, you know, his, his eyes lit up, and he's like, "What do you mean I give? Her, I didn't give her permission to mess with me." I said, "Dude, yes, you did." And he says, "How do you, how do you figure?" I said, "The second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh, the eighth, and the umpteenth time that you didn't do something about it and let her get away with it, uh -huh. you told her it was okay." Yep. So at that point there, why would she stop? <laughs> Right, because he allowed it. it. There's no reason for her to stop. Well, look, you can't you know? be a doormat. You can't be a doormat unless you lay down. Right, right. Facts, right. facts on facts. Yeah, back. yeah. <laughs> and, and so that you know, and that was the biggest realization for me. What started the self love process for me, right? So if I had to give somebody, you know, one of our listeners, one tip to like start the self process, it doesn't matter whether you're gay, straight, male, female, it doesn't matter. You know, I think. Both of you guys had some extremely, extremely valuable points. And to add to those would be, you know, realize that no one, no one is going to fucking love you 
unless you love yourself. Like you were saying and you were saying, Greg, right? both of you guys, we, we've all said this, right? And no one, no one, no one is going to respect you unless you respect yourself, right? And, and until that happens, you know, we can sit there and look on all the apps that we want to. We can sit there and, and even, even like with myself, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to take the steps to do something a little different, you know, I'm like, you know, trying to bring back chivalry and trying to bring back, like, I'm trying to, I'm like literally like courting this girl, you know what I'm saying, right? It's like, and, and so it's like, and, and I'll tell you right now, the way that that has shifted in my head, just the way that I, you know, I was telling, you know, the same person that I was just talking about, I was telling him like, imagine where that's going to be 60 days down the line when I've asked her all these deep personal questions and, and I finally get to see her because we'll be at an event, you know, out in England at the same time. And that's like 70, 70 plus days away. Imagine after 70 plus days of asking her a question like that, a deep question. Imagine how that's going to be when we actually see each other physically. Wow. Yeah. I love it. I mean, that's amazing. So, right. You know, and, and so, so that's what I would say, suggest to, to people and, and both of you guys, you know, said this already and I'm going to, you know, piggyback on that communication. Communication is key. So to any of you guys listening, if you want to change, the way you feel about yourself, change the way you talk about yourself, change the way that you talk about other people and that you talk with other people. You know, another thing that I want to say too is communication is the number one valuable tool there. But I also want to talk about your thoughts because if we go in, you know, if I'm a spiritual electrician, I'm getting in there, I need to examine, what am I examining? Well, I'm examining your thoughts. I'm examining the paradigms that you believe in. And what I do is I look at these thoughts and we, we look at it and I'm like, does that really serve you? And not only that, but did you realize that the thoughts that you think habitually all day long are literally are the thoughts that create the world? Now, most of us live by default. What we're doing is we have all these thoughts that run through our head all day long. Oh, look what she did to me. Oh, oh my God, look at that woman's dress. Oh my God, it's, it's, the weather's terrible today. You know, so you have all these thoughts and, and we don't even think about it, but those aren't our thoughts. We get back all day long and we either do it consciously or by default. And 90% of us on the planet do it by default. Mm -hmm. And so what we need to do is we need to think in terms of putting a new thought in there, something that is constructive, something that builds us up, something that helps us recognize our self-worth. And then we start changing our world and we become the artist with the paintbrush. We create right. our world that they, the way that we want to consciously instead of just living by default willy-nilly. Facts. Right. That's why us going through these avenues and so many other people that are on this wavelength that you're talking about is changing your mindset is making sure that what you're keeping up in here and what you're practicing out of here is all in positive terms because like you said the things that you keep on creating are the things that you're going to manifest and the things that you manifest is what going to come out and what comes out guess what is what's going to come back to you that's the way it's got to be so yeah when it comes to learning how to communicate absolute absolute key changing your mindset changing your mindset to make sure that your mindset is healthy make sure that your mindset is on a positive wavelength because i mean like we learn chris and all that this is all energy mm -hmm. everything in this universe is energy and this is something that it, it, it has with every, up, there's a down. So you got to be able to be healthy, loving yourself, keeping yourself in a positive, uh, a positive mindset, putting out positive, um, uh, putting out positive vibes in order so things could start changing. If you start loving yourself, if you start believing if you're in yourself, if you start creating this type of mindset, that's the mindset that you're going to attract back. So Mr. Electrician, ding, 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 ding. Yes, rewiring the brain. Let me brainwash you so you can start changing the way that you see things. Let me completely finally take the blindfold off so you can see how reality is because reality is something freaking beautiful as long as you know how to live in it. That's yep. what a lot of these people need help in. And this is why we are so valuable. We are so valuable being mentors and coaches and 
and inspirational speakers so we can help all these lost souls all these lost souls find themselves love themselves believe in themselves so then we can start changing and create a huge shift in a positive way and revamp this freaking universe the way that it's supposed to be well you know if you think in terms of a pendulum what happens is it swings one way and then eventually it goes the other way so we've gone from a wonderful happy life and that now we're on the opposite end of the pendulum where we're experiencing all this craziness and the way people treat each other the way people you know shoot each other in the head for a pair of shoes stuff like that but i think i think what we're doing now is we're finding a balance where hopefully we can get back to center again. because what happens when you turn the lights on the roaches run and so what are you talking about <laughs> what my coaches do is we help turn the light on in your individuality and in who right. you are as a person. And when that light comes on, then you start doing things differently. And my heart goes out to you, Chris, because the story that you told in one of those little videos on your Facebook uh, timeline, I was just so touched by that, where you lived by a train, yeah. where you did everything. I wish you could speak a little bit about that and what helped you make the changes in your life. Right. Yeah. So, so um, for those of you guys who aren't a part of the creative circle, um, you know, so for me, you know, I used to have, uh, I used to call on the largest grossing catering company in the South Bay area here in the San Francisco Bay area. We did about $3.7 million a year. I raised a million and a half dollars to build out a 14,000 square foot location. So that housed, uh, you know, the $3.7 million a year catering company plus a 200 seat restaurant. Oh. And, um, just before we opened up, my business partner decided to embezzle a bunch of money, tank the whole business. And that was like the catalyst that within two years of having all of that, reaching like the pinnacle of, of, of my business, within two years, 2014 to 2016, I lost everything. And when I mean everything, it was everything. Yeah. And so, I mean, to the point to where I was actually homeless, living in a tent in between the train tracks and the freeway entrance. For, Jesus. Yeah. So I was homeless for about two and a half years. And so the realization for me that was able to break out of that situation um, was, was twofold. First of all, it was realizing that if I didn't love my, like I mentioned this earlier, that if I, did, if I didn't love and respect myself, how the fuck can I expect anybody else? You can't. You absolutely, you can't put something on somebody else that you're not even willing to do for yourself, right? Second of all, I think it was um, probably, you know, stop, you know, stop looking externally for answers. You know, I think we get so caught up in, in what this person did to me or what that person said to me or how this person treated me, right? And it, it's just a vicious cycle because then we get into this point where we're demanding answers from this person. Well, you need to fix it. You have to, you know, unless you need to apologize. And, and, and even if they do and then we don't think it's good enough, then we're still pissed off, right? <laughs> so it's like... <laughs> You know, so it's like, well, that wasn't, that wasn't what, you, I, no, that wasn't enough of a sorry, you know what I'm saying? You need to grovel at my, whatever it is, you know, people have like this expectation of what the way that somebody should treat them when, you know, the problem is, is that no one is responsible for our own happiness. We are, you know, and, and the problem, like I was saying, so when I stopped, when I stopped, <laughs> right, when I stopped looking externally for answers is when it all changed. That was like the, the biggest, like, I think, the, you know, the biggest change was when I realized I had to stop blaming everybody else and take responsibility for it myself. Stop putting my happiness in other people's hands, you know? Yeah. Um, and like one of the things that I, like that I was telling a friend the other day is like the next time I step into a relationship is going to be kind of funny. Cause like, you know, I'll be, I'll be telling the girl like, so look, um, it doesn't matter what you do. You, you, I, I'm, uh, you're not, I don't rely on you to be happy. <laughs> Right. So it's like, it's kind of a weird, you know, it's like, I don't know like exactly how I'll probably word it a little nicer. Right. But saying like, don't worry about making me happy. I'm already happy. <laughs> it's something along those lines. But, but Chris, that's the paradigm shift that I'm talking about. You have a new way of looking at this because you learn from your experience. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes we can say all we want to say as a coach, but until they go through life, until they go through a scenario, they might not get that paradigm. It takes uh, some hardcore down and out. Um, I'm, you know, swinging my head low type of situation right. to happen in your life before they, before they get it. And the other thing that I want to say too, 
relationships are nothing but the reflection of what's going on in our inner consciousness. That's it. There are mirrors. And so if you can see the shit in somebody else, really what you're looking at is your own stuff. Now you're, right. you're thinking to yourself, some folks might be saying, whoa, 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 I didn't cheat. No, you might not have cheated there. Remember, you've heard that old adage about, well, we reap what we sow. We do reap what we sow, but we also, reap, but we don't reap where we sow. So if, if you were a shithead with somebody five years ago, you might be getting it back in this relationship just because of the way you treated someone. Or, oh my God. go ahead, Liz. If all you keep saying, a lot of these relationships is like, oh my God, he's an asshole or she's. You cut she out, she's cheating. You're putting it up. It doesn't happen. I don't know. You, you, keep, you cut out there a second. So repeat what you just said. <laughs> it's going to go right back to you. Exactly. <laughs> What part did you <laughs> leave off on? Are you there? You, can you, you were totally skimming there. Like, we totally missed what you said. Can you hear me now? Can you see me? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> go vote. Okay. There you go. Yeah. Okay, so you got to repeat that because, like, like 90% of it, like, you were like. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm not going to repeat it. I was going to say that a lot of people don't realize that the like I said your thoughts your thoughts are will are going to become your reality if you keep thinking they're cheating on me they're cheating on me they're out here sleeping with this person or he's an asshole or any of any kind of like this negative type of wavelength well guess what you end up manifesting and creating your own reality they're going to cheat on you that's exactly what you're bringing right back since that's all you're putting out right right so, so let me ask you this, Liz. So, so, so for our listeners, right? So, how does one, like, how are you, like, so obviously you had this epiphany that you had to change that, right? And, and you know, for me too, like, that was like one of the biggest things as well, you know. So, to kind of answer what you were asking earlier, Greg, about how I changed that, that was one of them as well. You know, it's like realizing that what I think is 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 what I'm attracting, right? Um, so, what was like that shift within you? Liz, that helped you realize that? Um, I mean, because we've all been shitheads in the past, right? I mean, it's like what Greg's saying, like, you know, I, I remember sitting there in my last relationship when I was dating this narcissist, somebody who had narcissistic personality disorder, and everything that happened that she did to me, I remember like, oh my God, that's what I did to Wendy Waddell when I was like 15 years old. <laughs> <laughs> so, right? So, like, we've all been shitheads. What was like that moment for you that you realized, Liz, like that turning point? Um... All right. If I get emotional, I'm gonna say right now, I'm sorry, but um. Don't be. That's why. That's why we're having a show because it's supposed to be real. This is called. So, you can. You can. You can be okay with that. So. <laughs> All right. So my story is this. It took twenty fucking years of my life that I gave. 10 to one man, 10 to the other, um, before I was able to finally stop and leave with the clothes that was on my back and say, I'm no longer taking this shit anymore. I was in a physical abusive relationship with both those men to the point of one, both of them put me in the hospital and one of them, I almost lost my life. And then I always kept on coming back. I always kept on staying for fear of them hurting my family or them hurting me and just being lost as to, you know what? They love me. You know what? It's okay. Like, you know what? They're sick. So I got to help them. And I couldn't take it anymore. I lost myself and I had no fucking idea who the hell I was. And you're cutting out again, Liz. I had no more care for my life, and I didn't give a shit what happened. They did it, did it glitch? Can you you're cutting me? out again, Liz. We're, we're still having issues here. Yeah, <sighs> you cut out again. Sorry. Ah! Um, hold on. 
I think that was, a, I think that's a very important message that people need to hear. Um, but you know, let's see, are you back Am on? Am I back now? Yeah. Can you see me? Yeah. Oh, you're, you're still kind can, of, uh, can you hear me clearly? Yeah, no. now we can. There you go. All right. All right. Nope, you keep cutting out. <laughs> what if let me let me take my let me let me relocate. All right. Don't judge. I haven't been home. I haven't been I haven't been home in like there's, six fucking days. There's no judgment here. And, and, and <laughs> so so while she relocates, you guys end up. So while she relocates, Greg. Tell me, tell me like about an experience that you had, some, you know, which, what, what was your like epiphany? What was your like moment where you realized that? Uh, um, what, what I wanted to make for myself, you mean? Yeah. Like what was that moment that you realized like I need to change and like, how did you make that change? Like what, what, like, what was that? What did that look like for you? Yeah. Well, I kept repeating the same cycle over and over again. Were doomed. They were they were codependent. They were relationships where I was uh, continuing the same old patterns and tapes from the past. Mm -hmm. I was doing these type of people that were possessive in nature, and so it took me a lot of years to realize that wow, you, you need to make some shifts and some changes here. But my relationships were the same old, same old, and I kept running in one relationship into another. And I never found any happiness because um, I, I didn't love myself, which is you've got to love yourself first. So a lot of it had to do with, you know, that, that repeating that same cycle of going in one relationship to another. Right. Right. Yeah. And, 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 you know, we're, we're about to run out of time here. Um, so with hopefully Lizbeth gets back on and, and is able to share that part of it. Cause I think, that that's something that was really important. You know, I think, yeah. you know, when, when people get into abusive relationships that I mean, they need to get out of them no matter what, you know? All right. So, so there, that's, that seems way better, Liz. Uh, you guys are now crawling into bed with me for the moment. <laughs> Ow! I thought we got to get to know you better. <laughs> <laughs> I'm making an exception for everyone today. <laughs> Welcome to my humble quiet place you feel special now <laughs> all right so where did um where where did i i leave off okay so so we're about to run out of time here so we probably have about another i would say maybe um like five minutes or so so you so why don't you just start over so you left off where you were explaining to us about how you were in two abusive relationships so what i would really like to get across to the listeners right now is what was it, what shifted within you that made you realize that you had to get out of that and how did you go about doing that? Ah, oh, we're not going to get it, are we, Greg? <laughs> um, the loser? Yeah. Okay. Wow. Well, bless her heart. Uh, right. So, you know, I, I, I think, you know, for me, you know, when I was in the relationship with, um, with the person who had narcissistic personality disorder, I think for me, what finally for, that finally shifted was just to, oh, are you back now? I don't know what is, I'm telling you, I swear, I think the universe guys does not want me to talk about this. I don't know what it is. <laughs> so, so, they, so, so I get, I, you know what it was? And, and I'll tell you right now, you're right. It didn't want you to talk about it because you're giving too much power to it because you let it, you, you got emotional for a second, you know? And, and so the universe was saying, no, don't give it any power. <laughs> I haven't felt that way in a very long time, and it was just weird. Okay. It was just like, <laughs> so, 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 not to give that any power. Let's give power to what it was that shifted in you that got you out of that. So let's let's give that some power. Yeah. It what shifted in my mindset when when I hit my lowest point in losing my, myself, losing my identity, no longer knowing who I was, what my purpose was, and not caring for my life anymore. Oh, no way, dang it again. Dang it, dang it, dang it. 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 Dang it.
And but you know what? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go. I'm gonna play off it because she is starting to say exactly what I was about to start talking about with me. You okay. know, it was it was like that complete loss of identity where I was just like, I don't even know who I am anymore, right? <laughs> and, and that was the shift for me in, in saying I've got to find myself again. And so, um, Liz, I think I think uh, we're gonna have to save your story for the next session, <laughs> and because because we're we're running out of time here. But the thing that I wanted to, I was not, I don't know if you can, were able to hear me when I was talking just now, um, because I think you were, you started to say exactly what I was about to say while you were trying to figure out a better spot for you. And, and I think realizing, <laughs> realizing that we had lost, that I had lost myself was that shift was like that holy F me moment. Like, no, I can't, I can't keep going this way. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so Everybody, you know, that's listening to this podcast, understand, I hope, you know, I hope you guys liked what you heard today. Um, in closing, I just wanted to, we have about three minutes, Greg. So in closing, if you could leave our, our, our listeners with something positive, what would, what would that be? Yeah, I think the most important thing here that we've been discussing about is this idea of loving yourself. Now, it sounds kind of cliche, but it truly is important. And if you don't know how to love yourself, that's why the coaches are out there. That's, we can help you with that. There are all sorts of coaches. You've got relationship coaches. You've got business coaches. So whatever your niche is, whatever you need help with, look for a type of coach. If it's not us, pick someone else. But the whole point is, is get a mentor. Get someone who can help you to appreciate who you are so that you can finally know your worth. You know, there's so many people on the planet nowadays, and there's a big chunk of them who has depression. There's a big chunk of them who feels a sense of loneliness. There's a big chunk of them who feels unworthy as, as a person. And a lot of churches do not contribute into our worthiness. If anything, they tell you you're a sinner going to hell and you're the worm of the earth. That's far that. from the truth. You are a spiritual being having a human experience. And Absolutely. Once you recognize yeah. who you truly are, that you are this spiritual being, then you have this incredible amount of love to share with the world. And that's, that's what it's all about. Right. Awesome. All right, Liz. Um, so you have about two minutes. Go. Closing Love statement. Love yourself. Love yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Love, 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 love yourself. Love yourself. I swear that I'm. I every single time we have this, I'm gonna say it over and over again. Love yourself, and you will see the beautiful changes that your life in general will start experiencing. Because it always has to start from here, here first, and everything else will fall into place. All right, Liz. So we have we still have up about another sixty seconds. So why don't you give us one of one of your amazing songs and close us out. <laughs> oh my god what am i gonna make up what am i gonna make up that everybody just i want to say just love yourself love yourself i say i say just love yourself love yourself what what i love chris i love chris oh yeah oh yeah i love greg i love greg uh-huh uh -huh. i love you guys <laughs> awesome chris you awesome. to join in? awesome all right greg thank you so much for your time bud love you bro Yes, yeah. thank, you. All right. uh, thank, thank you guys so much. Yeah, so as, as soon as I post this up, I'll give you, I'll, I'll put it off the link for everybody. Yeah. So we, know, we know where to share it. All right. And uh, I'll get together with you guys individually on Messenger and, and we'll go from there. All right, guys. Awesome. Peace out. Thank you. Love you guys. Love you guys. Love Bye. You. Love you. Bye. Nice meeting you. <laughs> nice to meet you.